a city skyline, a busy high street, stock footage of people playing frisbee. All imagery with very little relevance to the subject matter of this film, a subject that I will now segue into with all the subtlety and grace of a goose on acid. When we think of the modern student, flashing images of drinking, drugging, and dirty internet videos are what come to mind. But how often do we stop to consider whether these pissed up post pubescent pensioners are doing what they came to university to do what they're supposed to do? Studenting. We decided the hilariously accented city of Bristol would be perfect for our investigation into this topic, as it is thought that somewhere between 96 to 97 percent of all students at one university have never once turned up to class. We found a man in the street who looked like a student and asked him if this was true. So why is university attendance so low in this? Oh, I'm not a student. Was he really not a student? We shall never know. But what became clear to our investigation after this was that we would need to go deeper. Right now, if you were to quantify Bristol down to one big room, students would be the big fucking elephant in the corner. And just like Dumbo, they're trying to fly out of there. By taking advantage of one particularly gullible student, we were able to gain arguably perverse access to a city centre accommodation building for the University of Westerly West England, a significantly worse university than the ones I was rejected from. The building is called Market Gate, infamous for its debaucherous party culture, top quality artwork, and for looking like the ghost of a building that killed itself because it looked too boring. The housing company that runs the building, which shall not be named for illegal reasons, has come under scrutiny in recent years. The police saying they've turned a blind eye to lots of illegal activities. The students who live there saying that eye isn't blind enough. This angry girl we stopped in the corridor had this to say. Well, they're a fucking bunch of money-grabbing wankers. Are they wankers? Do the students have any money to grab? And how do they have hands free to grab money with all of this wanking going on? All will be answered later in this investigation. But seeing as it's only been a few minutes, I've got a lot of gestating to do first. Market Gate was built in 1813 after it was commissioned by the Prince Regent, who had claimed at the time that the Bristol party scene had been getting a bit shit and was in need of shaking up. Originally designed to be built out of sandstone and marble in the typical neo-Roman fashion, it somehow ended up looking like a prison in a bad remake of Blade Runner. Why this design flaw occurred remains a mystery to this day. The gate from which the building takes its name still standing where it was originally placed, protecting the good residents of this city from the godless liberals imprisoned within. Now, as you can see, the student loan is wasted on these people, as they already have ample supplies provided to them by these bins here. In fact, excuse me, excuse me there, what's your name? Oh, you mate? Zach. Zach, right, and what are you looking for? Bins. Bins. Right, uh, Zach there looking in a bin there for bins, as he might. Continuing across the courtyard, and uh, I must say, the first feeling I get whilst looking at this building is fear. Up the stairs and utilising the keys that I acquired off of a student earlier in the day, we should be able to enter. Ah. Oh, yes, and instantly I've been hit with a certain aura of depression delinquency and uh, the smell like there is or has recently been shit in here. As in any good halls, this is fitted with a state-of-the-art elevator system that functions on a regular basis.
Elevators are an expensive utility, so why not utilize them as a method of collecting money through coercive donation? But what about all the students who are getting mugged in elevators like these? Surely if they have enough money to worth being robbed, then they can afford enough alcohol to forget about it. Alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. Ugh. The one legal drug that every student should imbibe as if it were their own mother's boob milk. But alcohol is not a problem in this building. Or at least, not the problem we're dealing with today. Today is about sex, drugs and Greg's sausage roll. As part of our investigation, I decided it would be necessary to inhabit the room belonging to the student who I earlier subdued and dumped in a canal. By gaining access to this den of debauchery, I've been able to observe the activities that occur here on a daily basis. For example, it is not uncommon to walk in on a flatmate DJing alone in their room like a sad boy. Yeah! Or perhaps wanking alone in their room like a master by a machine. I make you fuck off for a second! Or doing both at the same time. To many of our viewers, it may now be clear that God left this place a long time ago. Into the communal kitchen area, where students can be seen to be cooking what I can only assume is soup over a burnt ladle. Based on shocking statistics that I've just made up, it is estimated that three out of five inhabitants of this building use this highly unnutritional method of cooking that has come to be known as smack, trap and cracking on a daily basis. I myself have gone for a finer delicacy. Wind fried rat confit on a bed of tender stem gutter moss salad, coupled with a four week vintage bin wine. Good God, that's smooth. Baking is just as popular, however. These two are really baked out of their minds. And I'm pretty sure this one's overdutted on the flour. Come on, mate, know your limits. <sighs> I don't mind. <sighs> but where is all of this flour coming from? The nearest baker is a square mile away. And I'm at least 70% sure it's not the same kind of flour. By standing in any corridor of this building, one is able to observe the semi-professional sport known locally as shotting. And yes, I think there is a dodgy shotter within view. It's just been confirmed for me now, but I think he's about to give the secret signal that a game is due to commence. Oh, and it looks like we have a taker. There he goes down the inside lane. Yes, there is the flower present in his right hand, but wait a minute. The taker has the money in his left hand. Oh, the likelihood of a successful shot has significantly decreased. But can they make it? Shot goes for the pass. Taker receives, but can he make the trade? He does! With a perfect one-handed pass. Wow, fantastic. There ends another shotting match. Ooh, what a game. I must say, if they took bets on this, I'd be fluttering like an angry pigeon. Oi! Huh. What the fuck are you doing? Reporting. Shouldn't you be studying? Oh! <coughs> oh God! <coughs> okay. I've learnt two things from that. One, all drug dealers are viciously violent criminals. And two, there are a lot of angry students. But why are they so angry? I know if I was able to live off free money from the government, I'd be smiling like the cat that got creamed on. <laughs> 
So why is it that all students are so angry? Um, I don't think we are. Well, I was punched in the face earlier today by an angry student. How do you explain that? <laughs> you probably, I don't know, annoyed him. I don't see how someone can be annoyed when they're receiving £9,000 in free money. <laughs> well, it doesn't exactly work like that. Well, how does it work then? We do have to give the money back once we earn over 25k. Okay, and what course do you do? Drama. Drama, right. So, do you honestly see yourself earning over 25k in the future? That's a really jaded question. Oh, come on, drama. Makes you about as employable as a blind guy, dog. Oh. In conclusion, all students are angry. Just last week in Stokes Croft, an elderly woman was punched in the face to death by a gang of feral students. We have no confirmation that this attack was indeed conducted by students, but as the police said the attackers were in their late teens, they might as fucking well be. As far as investigative journalism goes, it's always far easier to tar everyone with the same brush, which is my full intention for this piece. However, for the purposes of good viewing, I have to make it seem like my argument is at least somewhat balanced. We spoke to a more nerdy looking student who had some concerns about what the long term effects of violent psychosexual drugs debating might mean for the supposedly intellectual community. Well, um, yes, I, I do think that it's a bit of an issue, but perhaps not as widespread as one as you think. Um, and obviously, it is quite minor in comparison to some of the other problems that people in this building are facing as well. This specky know-it-all was at least half white. There are far bigger problems facing Marketgate. For years now, there have been rumours that a malignant presence plagues the corridors of this building. Whether these rumours are myths based on legends is a mysterious web of mythical legendary rumours too complex to unravel. Until last night, when I was hard at work collecting vital documentary footage, I was startled by a suspiciously paranormal sound. Hello? In the holy name of journalism, I took it upon myself to investigate immediately. Hello? Marco? Expecto Patronum? Manifesto ID calling, beastie! Excuse my impertinence. My name is Bertrand B. Bag, the bugle boy of Bond Street, Bristol, forever at your service. <laughs> Stay back, foul demon! The power of Christ compels you! Please, I mean no harm to the self, only the wallet, for that is the fuel that fattens my pocket. What is this meaning, cruel beast of hell, a creature of evil, all caution doth now? I am no evil, nor here in duress. I am the spirit of market gate, yet here to impress. If the rumours of these halls are to be believed, you are a ghost, are you not? A vision foreseen? True, some believe me to be as such, but believe me when I say none are beyond my touch. So you are a foul demon, I knew I was right! You've been molesting the students, abusing them at night! You misunderstand the metaphor of my jest. I am what powers the mind of the abuser at best. Oh, give up with the metaphor and answer the question. My dear boy, I embody the power of suggestion. A, a white elephant in the room, what's the intention? The white elephant in the room none wishes to mention. Does it not bother you? Do you not doubt? Why it is every resident here is without coin or note? 
for that is my purpose, to settle their funds, watch them revel in the glory of my bag so rotund. You two yourself have fallen ill of my power, evident in your abuse of that sweet flaky flower. One mention of a substance that piques their desire, and to me, the effort to stoke that warm fire. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, confound your piss riddles, intruder of the night! Rise and off thine fists and prepare to fight! If thou insists, I accept. For thus the way goes, but be certain that I shall deliver the final blows. Come, take what you want. I have it right here. Oh, fuck off to hell with that bag. I want a beer! Defeating me shall not bring an end to the thoughts in your head gone round the bend. Immortal! I am the carrot and the stick! Oh, shut up, you punts. This'll do the trick. Ah! It had come to the end of my time in Marketgate, and I was feeling confident. Confident that I'd help the students. Confident that there wouldn't be any CCTV. Confident that I could run down the stairs without being sick. Confident that I'd gotten to the crux of every mystery surrounding this building that I'd set out to uncover. Students in this city have fallen victim to what can only be described as themselves. By indulging in a lifestyle driven by a super perverted liberal agenda, they have rejected the caring hand offered to them by society in favour of cultivating this cesspit crucible of lefty middle class pseudo junkies with little to offer the world by cheap cannon fodder in the next world. I can only hope my considered intervention has taken away the students' confidence to continue this anarchic, godless lifestyle. And to any students watching, insisted on continuing this fuck with me, beware what elephants may befall you. Events. Beware what events may befall you. Goodbye.